Hello everyone, welcome again. In this software testing tutorial, we are going to learn software testing lifecycle or STLC. So what exactly is software testing lifecycle? Software testing lifecycle is a process that you follow within the software development lifecycle to test any application or any software. All right. So when you have software development lifecycle, software testing lifecycle fits within the development lifecycle and it is the process of testing any software. So we need to understand software testing lifecycle thoroughly before we can, you know, get into any software testing job because once you get into the software testing job or you are trying to get into software testing job, you need to understand how software testing lifecycle or the process is actually so that you can, uh, you know, you know the process and you can actually work with the team and come up to speed very quickly when you join any organization. So let's understand what exactly software testing lifecycle is. So it is the set of processes or the phases basically, right? So it's, it's uh, different phases are there in software testing lifecycle. The first phase is the requirements analysis. Now in any software development, the first thing um, that you will get is the requirements, right? So the first phase in STLC as well is a requirements analysis. Okay, when we say requirement analysis, say for example, I am a software development organization or say for example, there is an organization ABC named, which is the organization who takes the project to develop software for the customers. Okay, now this organization, how will they, um, you know, basically start developing something if they don't know what customer wants, right? So there will be a customer, okay? There will be a customer and the customer, you know, usually it will be organization, right? So I've just uh, made a, a person there because some person or a group of person, people will be representing that customer organization and they will come down and they'll, uh, you know, provide or they'll uh, give the requirement or they'll dictate the requirement to this particular ABC organization. Say, for example, this is the organization, right? So uh, XYZ is the organization who wants to develop uh, e-commerce. So let's take e-commerce app, e-commerce website. Okay. So what they'll do is they'll come to this particular organization or they'll provide a bid bidding and there'll be a couple of organizations that will be bidding. And then once this organization has won the bid that yes, we'll develop e-commerce website for you they will start explaining what all they want in the e-commerce website right so they will say we want the website to work on all different browsers chrome firefox right so that's one of the requirement we want the login functionality using google account facebook account right so login functionality need to be there add add cart add items to cart okay then remove items to cart so these are some of the requirement, right? So there'll be n number of requirement there. So this is just an example I'm showing you how the requirements will come through, okay? So once all these requirements are being captured into a document, okay? So if it is waterfall approach, you will be having a lengthy requirements document that will be capturing all these requirements, how the look and feel will be of the website. And those requirements will come through to the ABC organization. There'll be some team in the ABC organization which will start developing the website okay and you as a tester will be part of that team to basically analyze the requirement and start testing once the website is being built okay so in the requirement analysis requirement analysis phase of software testing life cycle what you do as a tester or a testing team is you get go through these requirements okay and these requirements you understand and you analyze those requirements Okay, you analyze what all possibilities, what all test cases will be there and that all analysis happens into the requirement analysis phase. So basically testing team understands the requirement. If there are any gaps, they provide the feedback to the requirements team or the development team or, or product owner in current case. So if, if say for example, you are working in a, a agile development approach, then 
you will get the requirement in the form of user stories. So you will analyze those and based on that analysis, you will start your testing work. Okay, so once the analysis is done, the next phase is basically the planning phase. Okay, so test planning. Okay, let me get rid of it. Okay, so the next phase is test planning. So what happens in test planning? So you have analyzed all the requirement and now you understand what all needs to be built and what all requirements are there and how you are going to test, right? So once you as a team or a tester understand the requirement, then you start the planning. Now in the test planning, you start with the test plan, okay? So if you are working in the waterfall approach, you will write the complete master test plan and then the phase test plan separately. But if it is, you know, agile, then in that case, you will still do planning in each iteration or each sprint, right? You will write a quick plan for whatever requirements. So for example, you have, um, you know, taken requirement one, two, three, four, five in one sprint, okay? Then for all these requirements, you will start the plan. You'll, you'll, you'll do some little bit of planning how you are going to test these requirements. Who is going to test? What will be the, you know, like the timeline? So in, in terms of timeline, it's anyways, uh, two weeks in sprint. But if it is, you know, like waterfall, then you put all those details into your test plan, right? So what is the scope? What is out of scope? What is entry exit criteria? So all these details go into the test planning. When you do test planning, you write the test plan, right? Um, in Agile, it is not that lengthy test plan, but still you need to do a fair bit of planning before you can actually start testing the user stories that you pick into the sprints, okay? The third phase is the test preparation, okay? Or test development. So test case, design, and creation, okay? So what you do is basically, or I'll say test case design and development, development, okay? So you develop your test cases. So when you say test case design, so you apply all the tests, you know, um, uh, test design techniques, right? So equivalence, equivalence partitioning, boundary value analysis, which I'll explain in upcoming tutorials. Uh, so you will apply all those techniques to design your test cases, what all test cases need to be, you know, added for the functionality. And then you develop those test cases. You write those test cases into the test management tool. So you categorize those into different, you know, um, feature wise uh, or the requirement wise, you make those test cases and develop those test cases, right? So that's the third phase. The next phase is around uh, the environment setup, okay? So once you are your test cases are ready, so you have this test environment setup. So usually if your team, testing team has the capability to set up the test environment, you can do it yourself or there will be uh, you know, uh, a team, separate team, which will help you, okay? So, uh, to say, for example, if you are, you know, uh, I'll say another team. So, if, say, for example, your application is really complex one, which requires a lot of integration, usually in banking sector, that happens, or telecom. In that case, there will be a separate team which will maintain the test environment for you. And in the test environment setup, all the test environment related detail or, or test environment will be, you know, uh, ready and made available to the testing team. And then you have to basically ensure your test data and everything is, is set up there. So test data preparation you have to do and provide to the separate team. Or if your team is capable or testing team is capable to manage the test environment test data, they can do the whole environment setup themselves. But test data, you have to provide to the team if the test environment is being managed by other team, right? So this fourth phase is basically test environment setup because test environment is required for any of the testing that you need to do, right? Where you will execute your test cases that you have written here. So once the test cases have been written, you will have the environment where you where you'll have this e-commerce, say for example, e-commerce website code deployed. And then when you launch the website in the browser, in the test environment, it will be visible. And then you can verify the website, look and feel, adding items. So all the features that are available there in that particular release, 
you can start you know testing that so test environment setup is necessary so that's the fourth step fifth step is test execution all right so once the environment is ready and you have test cases ready right so the next step is the test execution so how will you verify that the uh, test cases that you have developed verify or uh, meet or pass or fail right so those th that happens only when you will execute so when you execute your test cases you verify that the website is being launched okay so you open the browser you launch the website and then you add the item to the cart if the item is getting added the test case is passed so for example you have a test case for adding item into the cart if the item you remove gets removed successfully that test case is passed if any of these you know um, operations fail then the test case fail right so in the test execution you execute the test case and then verify whether the test case got passed or failed so that's the another phase of software testing lifecycle so these are step by step phases that happen into the software testing lifecycle or stlc so after test execution has been completed right so after test execution has been completed the next phase is the uh, exit criteria and reporting so basically test reporting you can say test reports okay or test reporting so in test reporting what you do is once your test cases or uh, all the testing that has been planned has been completed you need to provide the report right so say for example execution happened if there were test cases that failed then those test cases will be reassigned to the developer or basically the defects will be reassigned to the de developer to fix they will come back to you to the testing to verify again and once all the testing has been passed then you provide the report or even if there are open defects and those defects are accepted by the relevant stakeholders and they say yes these defects we will fix in the next release then you start preparing the test report and what you prepare, prepare in the report is how overall testing went through what all testing has been done what was in scope uh, and what is the overall confidence right so which will help you to decide or which will help the team to decide go and no go whether they need to deploy in production or they want to you know like fix more defect or, or make the uh, software more stable right so test reporting um, is the reports that you produce after the testing has been done right uh, and then the seventh phase is around the test closure okay test closure so test closure what you do is in test closure now after the overall testing has been completed and the uh, you know software has been deployed in production so in test closure activities what you do is you produce all the documents that are helpful for other team if say for example there is another team who is maintaining that particular software in production then in the closure documentation you have all the documentation around the test cases where the test cases are uh, what testing has been done uh, what all artifacts have been produced in terms of test plan summary reports etc all those details along with the development document need to be you know uh, produced for the test closure activity so once the complete testing has been completed or the overall testing for the project has been completed you provide the test closure summary report or the test closure documentation okay so all the test closure uh, phase has the activities different activities and depending on which type of software you're testing based on the context you have to provide the relevant documentation for that okay now these are the seven phases in software testing life cycle right so this is the process of software testing life cycle which you need to understand and understand very clearly for interview purposes and even for working in any of the software testing project now this stlc remains same for the waterfall or agile it doesn't matter the only difference basically happens is you know in the closure activities 
you do not provide closer reports in agile for every sprint okay you do have the reports but those reports are automated out of the tools so for example if you are using uh, jira they are out of the jira itself you have the gadgets and you can pull the reports of the execution for each sprint um, you know automatically in jira but in agile the test closure report will happen after for the release not every sprint right so which is basically similar what we do in the waterfall approach the only difference is in the terms of timeline in waterfall project might run for a year but agile usually the delivery happens every month or you know every three months at the max so you have to provide test closure uh, you know reports or uh, activities after every you know three months in agile or after every month right it's, it's uh, as per the organization's requirement but in terms of phases, it's same. You have to follow, you know, similar uh, phases or the test activities in software testing lifecycle. It doesn't matter you are working V model, waterfall model, or agile Scrum approaches, right? So if you are working in two weeks, two to four weeks Scrum in agile, you will do you will do user story analysis, which is requirement analysis. Based on that, you will understand the acceptance criteria. If there are any gaps, you will discuss with the business analyst. Then you will plan the test cases, right? Or you'll, you'll do the planning. What strategy you will apply to test the user stories that you have picked in these, in this two to four week cycle, right? In the sprint. And you will develop a quick, short one to two page plan. Okay. That plan will be for your sprint for the iteration of two to four weeks. Then you will design your test cases okay in the tool you'll quickly design the scenarios and the test cases and this is all very collaborative in agile that's the good thing that you will be on a daily basis you will be communicating with business analysts with the developers to understand the overall you know uh, requirement and make making sure that everyone is on the same page okay then in the test environment setup mostly um, the team does it if you are doing it um, you know you you do it you know quickly within the sprint and then execute and then report which is automated right so stlc understanding of stlc how it is you know used within software development life cycle is very important so these are some of the key steps and points that you need to understand for working in any of the software testing teams or for interview purposes so that's all for this tutorial hope it was helpful and clear please do share and subscribe and thank you very much for watching.